there's very little we can derive from this data to take it forward, right? I mean, Q1 is going to be an entirely new ball game. There's no way to understand whether this strength in consumption is going to continue. It probably won't. Uh, how much will it, uh, you know, sort of decelerate by? No idea. How much manufacturing will come down given the standard and, you know, sort of uh, disparate nature of lockdowns? Again, no idea. So, you know, Q4 is a good number to have in the time series, but I'm not sure what to take of it for the current economy. Absolutely. We are looking at a lot of uncertainty and uh, any range of outcomes that can actually end up uh, manifesting in FY22. Uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, we have uh, some states where the COVID cases seem to have peaked and we expect that they're going to start their unlock processes and it's going to happen in a standard manner uh, going forward. But a lot of Q1 is going to be hit. And uh, my argument is this time it's a, a demand uh, problem. And that uh, sentiment is going to be weakened uh, for households because of the actual uh, health crisis and the fact that disposable incomes are getting squeezed very badly by the healthcare uh, expenditures for a lot of people. And the rural economy, which uh, really sort of buffered uh, the overall uh, economic activity last year, has seen a, a bigger spike in COVID cases this time. So that's something that's not going to really be able to provide as much of uh, strength uh, to the overall economic uh, activity as what we saw last year around. So we're definitely in a complicated situation even without having had a nationwide uh, lockdown. Now looking ahead, I would argue that uh, the sentiment is going to recover slower this time than it did uh, last year. And we've got two contrasting forces going ahead. Will the vaccines uh, get rolled out faster than what we are expecting right now, especially to young adults who make up a very large part of our population? And will that be enough to really avert a third wave? Uh, these are questions that are very difficult to answer at this point in time. And depending on which uh, outcome we think has a greater probability, uh, the associated likely GDP uh, projection for this year ends up being very different. So I'm going to offer you a wide range, uh, very uncharacteristic uh, and, and not very comfortable uh, position to be in. But I think that's the most uh, uh, realistic situation at this point in time. We think that GDP in FI22 can expand between 8 and 9.5%. And so not a double-digit growth which we were hoping for this year. Somewhere between 8 and 9.5%, and depending on which of these uh, sort of uh, extreme outcomes uh, ends up being uh, the actual situation in FI22. Uh, sure, but you know, when the second wave initially hit, a lot of uh, reports uh, uh, were generally along the lines that this is a recovery sort of interrupted but not, uh, you know, completely thrown off track. Uh, is there confidence in that uh, analysis even now that, you know, as things open up, some of this consumption that it started to pick up will come back on stream or uh, are we back to sort of square one or completely different picture? So a few things. Um, one, uh, there's been a permanent scarring of income, big scarring. Uh, so compared to where uh, our, uh, well, alternative growth path would have been without the COVID, uh, and where we are now, and where will we 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 will will be in, in FI22? Uh, we have probably permanently lost about 50 to 60 lakh crores of income. Uh, so that's that's gone permanently gone. Uh, secondly, in in terms of uh, the and, and whatever, as Riti says, uh, we are uh, at about a real growth of nine to ten and a half percent, anywhere uh, nine point eight percent centered. Uh, so this this year in FI22. Uh, Question is, what can can they regain uh, a six percent potential growth uh, in in the years ahead? I mean, say six and a half, seven percent, or whatever. Uh, my own sense is, I'm I'm relatively more optimistic uh, on that score. Uh, we we we've lost a lot of small businesses, yeah. Uh, in 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 the course of the first wave and the second wave, the ongoing second wave, uh, we will have lost a lot of small businesses. The, the really the sorry part of all this. Is that this this range of small businesses, um, uh, lower income households, actually contribute to a very small part of the overall GDP? This is not a good thing to say, but it's it's the truth. Uh, so the hit on this will not detract from the bigger picture story uh, of of the of the larger set of, of our economic activity. Uh, plus, on top of this, uh, if the government actually follows up on some of the reforms that they have seen. Uh, some of the good structural reforms, which unfortunately only seem to come in, 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 the, in the time in times of crisis. Uh, if we can leverage on some of these, say, for instance, in the manufacturing sector, the PLI schemes, although I'm told other than a few sectors, there are still many glitches in, 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 the, in the PLI schemes. Uh, 
so if we can if we can increase our competitiveness, if our healthcare spends increase, uh, if if uh, government capex spending increases, our infrastructure, uh, so the ability of people to buy houses farther away from uh, uh, dense downtown areas and consequently less expensive, etc. So in all of these changes, plus on top of that, the biggest boon that has come in from from this. Uh, slowdown, as you know, is digitalization. So now, I mean, technology is so pervasive in, in tier two, three, four towns. Uh, so, I mean, if we can use some of the technology to increase our efficiencies, uh, our, 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 I'm, I'm certain we can, we can go on to higher growth. Problem is, again, I mean, the, the other side, uh, that because of this increased digitalization and the use of technology and automation, although our productivity uh, would certainly increase, uh, there is the question of job significance. How to uh, fill that that gap in the in the, in the jobs is, is something that needs to uh, get a lot of policy. Attention.